Buffalo hunters, pioneers, cattlemen, railroad men. 1868 America was gripped by an exuberant spirit of expansion. Industries multiplied, cities boomed, and thousands turned westward. 1868. In October of that year, ground was broken for a railroad, marking the beginning of the Santa Fe system. The road was begun under the inspired guidance of Cyrus K. Holliday, lawyer and founder of the city of Topeka, whose dream it was to build a set of tracks all the way to Santa Fe, New Mexico. On the old Santa Fe Trail, heavily loaded wagon trains hauled foodstuffs and manufactured goods westward and returned to Kansas with hides, furs, silver, and gold. This kind of trade promised lucrative opportunities for a railroad, but Holiday saw more than that. All through the great Southwest, rich natural resources were abundant. Land that could support lush prairie grass and millions of buffalo, support rich farms too. But all these resources could be made productive only if low-cost transportation were made available. So the Santa Fe pushed on through Kansas into Colorado and became a colonizer, bringing thousands of homesteaders from the East, from Europe, to settle the land and develop its great potential. Soon wheat and cattle and other products were being shipped. And having products to ship helped the railroad grow. Having rail service helped the farmers prosper. And this unique partnership has persisted through the years, the railroad and community both gaining by improved services. As the railroad grew, moving to Los Angeles and San Francisco, to the great valleys of California, it continued to act as a colonizer, bringing people to the land and the cities of the West, carrying the products that made the development of the country possible. It moved eastward as well, completing its link to Chicago in 1888, thus creating a new transcontinental railroad linking Chicago to the Pacific coast and the Gulf of Mexico. Thus, the twin bands of steel united the great Southwest with the rest of the nation. Along with being a sign of unity, the rails became a symbol of adventure as they disappeared over the horizon. And the call for adventure was the kaleidoscope of steam locomotive sounds. after its birth, the Santa Fe Railway continues to function at the frontier. But it is a frontier of a different kind. No longer is it the conquest of land masses, but rather the conquest of time and space through ideas, through research and creativity. As in 1868, to be at the forward edge of any movement requires the desire to be better, the commitment to change, and the frontiersmen today, although possessing the same spirit that drove pioneers and railroad builders a century ago, are different too. Today they are equipped with new skills and move the nation's goods with vastly different tools. Today the area served by the company has changed too. New services, New products are required. So the company changes as well, expanding its services, seeking new endeavors, advancing new ideas, as it speeds into the second century, past milepost 100. This is the story of a freight train, LA-53, showing how a modern railroad combines manpower, the most modern devices, and creativity to keep at the forward edge of transportation. This is Corwin, 
a $20 million sorting system on the southwest side of Chicago. The story of LA-53 begins here. The cars that form LA-53 come from many places, from factories, from freight forwarders, from other railroads. Before the cars reach Corwith, however, a biography precedes each of them to this control center, where the information is entered into the computerized record system. What it is carrying, where does it come from, and where it is going. Car sequence and order of handling are entered into each car record to make up a list of cars called a wheel report. This list is the blueprint for LA-53. We'll have 89 cars for LA-53. It's scheduled for departure at 10 o'clock. We have a connecting line delivery on track 10. Let's schedule for switching as soon as possible. All right, number one, we'll get track 10 next. Hello, Fred. I'm gonna go track 10, get up list 72. And now, LA-53 becomes more than just a symbol as its cars are collected. Soon it will be a fast freight from Chicago to Los Angeles. This electronic system stores up to five car movements, keeping the system rolling continually. Although gravity starts the car down this 3% grade, modern automation takes over instantly. An electronically controlled scale weighs the cars in motion, and simultaneously, the system records the number of cars on each track. Radar measures the speed of each car and signals to the retarders to control the speed. And to protect the merchandise inside, perhaps as fragile as Dresden China, cars are built with a shock control system that absorbs jolts and bumps, assuring a smooth, even ride for all types of freight. The cars roll down the track and couple with a gentle nudge at four miles per hour. There are 20 piggyback loads destined for LA-53 today. By any standard, piggyback is a remarkable success story. Combining the economy, long-haul speed, and dependability of the railroad with the versatility of the tractor and trailer, piggyback traffic continues growing at about 20% a year. horsepower to move LA-53. Nine thousand six hundred gallons of diesel fuel. Three thousand two hundred quarts of crankcase oil. And four tons of specially dried sand for increased traction. LA-53, you've got the green signal. Take it away.
travel westward to Los Angeles down the main line. Many innovations, thousands of hours of research and experimentation have combined to reach this point on the railroad frontier to move a mile-long freight along in a mile a minute, hour after hour. Not only do freight trains travel faster, but their cars are tailored to fit the many needs of modern transportation. The changes are many. Most cars are larger and more colorful. There are dramatic changes on the inside, too. Interior partitions are easily adjusted to various sized loads. Specially designed cars can handle aircraft sections. has the unique ability to adapt itself to different modes of transportation with a minimum of handling. Sealed containers are transported across the country from factory to dockside and stacked aboard newly designed ships like so many building blocks. At dusk, LA-53 rolls into Kansas City Even the sounds of railroading are changing. All along the way, the old clickety-clack is giving way to the new sound of welded rail. Each section of continuous welded rail is more than a quarter mile in length, providing a quieter, smoother ride and assuring longer life for track and equipment. Yes, the traditional clickety-clack is disappearing and new sounds have been added. Communications, for example. The train crew and the dispatcher are in constant touch with each other through radio telephone for maximum control of traffic flow. An index of the railroad's efficiency is the effectiveness of its communication system. Today, the railroad's microwave system extends from Chicago to the West Coast answering many types of communication needs, including a direct dial telephone service. This is data processing. Uh, according to my records, we'll run FTO3 tomorrow. Goodbye. At the data processing center, talent and equipment combine, providing fast, accurate information to aid in reaching decisions. Organized information helps control car supply, diesel assignments, and aids in scheduling train movements through simulation. As information rolls off the computers, so too are cars rolling off the assembly line at Topeka, Kansas. What was true in 1868, is equally true today. A dependable supply of new equipment is a fundamental need of a transportation system. Okay, Don, did you check those floor racks out? Yeah, checked out just fine. Well, I think we're in pretty good shape then. Skilled craftsmen get the job done with assembly line techniques, building new cars and updating older equipment, keeping the railroad rolling. This assembly line produced the prototype auto rack car. This car, the first in the industry, was designed and built by Santa Fe mechanical engineers and carried the initial multi-level auto load in January of 1960. Since then, the percentage of automobiles carried by rail has grown from less than 10% to about half the cars shipped in the US.
Gains in our national productivity have been achieved through mass production methods. Assembly line techniques are successful only when there is a mass market and an economical movement of the finished product to the consumer. The auto veyer car carrying 12 to 15 vehicles is an essential link in this production distribution process. There is a constant search for the best ways of doing things, striving to provide the best possible service. In the Technical Research and Development Center, there is a continuing effort to improve current equipment and seek new methods. It may be the testing of control devices, perhaps it's the search for a better fuel oil mix. or it might be a better way of measuring fuel consumption. The search also moves outside the laboratories to the rails, to test, to improve, to take advantage of the inherent low friction characteristics of the flanged wheel on the steel rail. In fact, the wheels of all the cars on LA-53 make a total contact with the rail of less than two square feet about the same amount of friction contact as one large trailer truck. The continuing search to make the railroad more productive is also the work of the market research staff. Questions are asked. Studies are made. Patterns of inquiry lead to new service concepts. And uh, I'd like at this point in time to get the reaction of several of you. Uh, Jack uh, Lawson, I'd like to have your evaluation as to whether or not this kind of a service really would uh, provide us enough volume to justify it. Well, for example, research disclosed the possibility of a market for premium freight service between Chicago and Los Angeles. The idea seemed attractive. Tests were made, including high-speed photographic studies. Computers made simulated runs. The test indicated it could be done. Thus, on January 17, 1968, Super Sea Service was born. The world's fastest freight train. Premium service. Less than 40 hours, Chicago to Los Angeles. Tower number one. The Western Train 99. Super C. You're all clear to the main line. Go west, young man. the continent LA-53 speeds past the vast sorghum fields of Texas. Each year, millions of tons of grain must be moved quickly and economically to the elevators, the flour mills, the great grain shipping ports of our nation. significant improvement in grain transportation has been this giant 100-ton hopper car, capable of being loaded in 12 minutes, unloaded in nearly three minutes, with twice the bulk load capacity of the standard boxcar. field in Texas to a lettuce field in Arizona. Transportation improvements not only move products better and faster, but they can also change our ways of living. 
For example, today we take for granted the mass movement of fresh and frozen produce in mechanical temperature controlled cars, MTC for short. Perishable products are preserved and moved more economically to the marketplace than ever before, providing homemakers with a greater variety and abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables. From lettuce to coal, from cool cars to coal cars, each commodity requires a vastly different transportation service. Adjusting to each requirement is an index of the railroad's ability to provide flexible service. Every four days, a unit coal train leaves the mines of York Canyon, New Mexico, bound for the steel mills at Fontana, California. By supplying the raw materials for this steel plant on a regular schedule, the unit train serves as a conveyor belt in the production process. Precision schedules require reliability in all types of weather. But being ready for the unusual has equipped the railroad to handle the usual with greater efficiency than ever before. after the run has started, LA-53 eases into the Los Angeles yard. Okay, we'll figure your whole part set out in track number one, old yard number one. has LA-53 brought to California? Autos and auto parts. Paper and canned foods. Building supplies. 2,500 tons of freight. To feed and clothe people. To provide entertainment. To supply materials that keep people working and productive. L.A. 53 is no more. Another dawn in Chicago. Another L.A. 53 is born. At this very hour, more than 170 trains are serving communities all along the system. At Kansas City, Wichita, Oklahoma City, Amarillo, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Denver, Albuquerque, Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, and at many other points. This is our 100th year as a railroad, and we've seen a lot of history since 1868. But the times change, and so will Santa Fe. And with changes, we will learn new skills, introduce new ideas, and continue at the forward edge of transportation service as we move forward into our second century.